Good e yeah, I was like, we're a little stunned. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeanette, the creator and one of the two co-founders of the Gratitude and Appreciation Summits. And it's Thursday at 7.15, so that means it's Thankful Thursday Reflections. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening, Jeanette. I like your stunned face. I think it's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kathy Fester, and I'm co-founder of the... <laughs> I'm the co-founder of the Gratitude Appreciation Summit, and we are thrilled to be here tonight. But I know Jeanette's got a special greeting that she'd like to well, send. Well, from, from Kathy, our team, uh, Imagine That Events, and Marshall, and, uh, and Peter, who takes care of our website, we just want to put out a big um, happy Thanksgiving to our U.S. followers, uh, to our U.S. attendees that have uh, come to our events over this past couple of years. We are so grateful that you take the time out to learn about gratitude and appreciation from the experts that we that we come on that that we bring on and that you tune in and, and watch our videos and subscribe to our videos over on our YouTube channel. Um, that you're along with us on this ride of how we are changing the world using gratitude and appreciation as the foundation. So we hope you enjoy all your turkey. And I'd like to know, Kathy, because I was having this conversation with, are you, do you call it stuffing or dressing? So in the comments today, do you call it in your family, stuffing or dressing? <laughs> that oh, was my question. It's stuffing all the way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've heard people call it dressing, but you know what? Yeah. Either way, you should be grateful it's on your plate. Well, I stuff the bird, even though lots of chefs say don't do that. But my mom taught me how to make the most amazing turkey and stuffing, and I still use her method today. And I don't know, I like it. <laughs> well, and speaking of your mom, mm -hmm. we happen to have a family member of yours on I again. I do. My awesome sister, Glenda Ottens. Thank you for agreeing to come on tonight. <laughs> I asked Glenda to come on tonight because she has gone through quite a journey. As many of you know, BC is in a state of emergency with some pretty major flooding and we're cut off, many communities are cut off and will be for several months, uh, a couple of the roads, highways. Um, but Glenda um, stayed in her home and there's been some interesting, beautiful things that have been going on. And I thought it would be great for Glenda to share some of those stories because I know that uh, gratitude is shining through from community to community during this time for sure. So welcome, Glenda. Thank you. It's good to be here, you guys. <laughs> so I know that you're on a farm and you're in a farming community. How many people live in your area? There's about 30, 40? Um, 42 kind of right in our immediate area. Yeah, yeah. And tell us what happened. Like what, what was some of the things that really impacted all of you? Um, I think uh, before we lost our bridge that kind of connects us to the road to take us into town or go to the, even the coast, um, people noticed that things were, uh, a lot of debris was getting caught in the bridge and we were really scared we were going to lose it. So people jumped, we were lucky to have some heavy equipment and they started to try and clear um, the stuff away and tried to save the bridge from collapsing and the roadway and everything. Unfortunately, the river was just too strong. It was one mighty river, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the bridge actually was saved. Um, it didn't get torn apart. It was more the road on the other side that connects to the bridge. Because didn't and, the river like double in size? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. um because it even went over the road even you know up up the road further too but mm -hmm. um so but we've been fortunate in that um you know we've had that heavy equipment because there's a little atv slash four by four trail that they were able to kind of fill in some potholes make it a little bit more stable to kind of have a like a one vehicle four by four kind of go along the other mountain range to get to town so mm -hmm. that was kind of a, a lifesaver so if anything happened or anything you know we could uh it's still hopefully get some access um it's it's been really challenging i mean without the power that was kind of the biggest obstacle at first right and of course not knowing when things were going to be repaired or we could be connected and and stuff like that but mm -hmm. i think for the majority of us you know that live in this little area um you know, we were quite happy to just kind of hunker down. Most of our land is a little bit up high enough. So we weren't really immediately flooded. Maybe some of our 
you know, farms or flat hay fields and stuff like that. But um, it was just really good. And so we had a little spontaneous community meeting about a day later, tried to figure out if, what everybody needed, if there's any medical assistance, um, supplies, food, water, et cetera, et cetera. And we just kind of spread it all out and organized, um, you know, people to go into town to get supplies for, you know, different people and bring it back. So not everybody was, you know, trekking in. Um, and just uh, I guess, getting I guess water idea, to people in town and everything. Yeah, I guess the idea was to be people not to be traveling too much. So you only had like one vehicle going on that. Yeah, because the road's still pretty dicey. Um, it's quite cliffy. And because of the moisture, we could have had our own mudslides. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we had freezing weather and snow and everything else. So, you know, without but the services how, of clearing or anything. How far away are you from supplies? Um, 30 minutes. Oh, so that's still a big track for someone to to volunteer to go in and get the thing. So that's that's still well, and, and it wasn't even to get it necessarily 30 minutes away. Some of it was in Kamloops, which was Yeah, because Merritt being shut down, we'd have to go to Kamloops, which is like an hour and a bit away. Um wow. Kelowna would have been even further. Yeah. Um well, I know you told me a snow and stuff. You told me a story about uh you got somebody getting gas. Um, that the Nicola Valley paid for the first jerry can of gas and you all gave you jerry oh, cans yeah, the to a Thompson, pickup truck. The Nicola <laughs> Regional District, yeah. We yeah. Uh, put all our jerry cans in someone's pickup truck and they went to town. Um, they were granted access because there's a couple gas stations that were um, designated to stay open so that all the working vehicles and stuff could still fuel up and people could get gas for their generators and stuff. So, um, yeah, so that was really, we were very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So how has this experience um, changed your outlook or has it changed or just confirmed um, why you moved there, first of all? I mean, even the, the Indian band reached out to you and has offered, you know, access to their land to come out. And has anything changed, you know, your view or, or are you just incredibly thankful where you are? I think having the personalities of and the giving of people um, on this side, we're very lucky. I don't think all small kind of rural communities have such diverse, um, you know, education and talents and the machinery and everything. And I think, you know, always making good with your neighbors and, you know, there were no boundaries. I mean, I think it's even included, you know, working how Abbotsford's working really hard with the Washington state, you know, there are no borders. We're all, you know, in this together and we, you know, it all has a rippling effect. So mm -hmm. if we don't have those lines drawn between us, it's amazing how fast things can happen and, um, and how many lives can actually literally be saved, you know, helicoptering people out and everything. Right. Question for you. Had your community ever had one of these little get together meetings before just to get to know each other for where you live or was this brought together because of what was happening um where you live yeah more so because of this we don't really have community meetings um so yeah this was kind of a first and well, um yeah and we were able to use um you know data to kind of collectively communicate with each other as well mm -hmm. for organizing things so that was like that was tremendous and great. Well, I even I even thought it was great during your power outage because you had no power what for four days or something, and a couple yeah. of people had generators and you'd all take turns charging your phones in their generator and sharing that power because you know you don't have a generator you were you were hooped. yeah and with the generators you could have running water too so if you know we run out of water you can just take a jug over to so and so's house or whatever yeah so yeah, yeah. So I just think it's a beautiful story yes. you know. Yeah. And, and, we're, and we're seeing it across the board. And now the East Coast is dealing with their stories. Um, for those of you that don't know, they're, they're dealing with floods. They're in a state of emergency as well in Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And people literally escaped their homes through windows because the water came so fast. And scary. it's very scary. And I am just so grateful that we have communities out there that get it. And that working together and being kind to one another like really does up. create a force. Yeah. yeah. Just, I love how 
when you said no boundaries, when we're all in a disaster, we're all in a disaster. And you, you, you just, you step up, you step up with, with whatever you have, whatever you have. So Glenda, what, what does the future um, looking like for your community and beyond into the merit area? Well, I think once we have access here and the bridge is completed, which is hopefully tomorrow, um, there's a little delay in that because a power pole kind of went down this morning um, oh, on this side, but they were actually able to fix it. So we got our power back on again. <laughs> um, so they're hoping to have it done tomorrow. So we're going to all kind of plan on going in town and helping as much as possible. There's so many people that don't have a home. Um, and they're not allowed to have access yet. The infrastructure is not stable enough. They're still trying to fill in sinkholes and, um, you know, just the possibility of being electrocuted, even though that things, is, you know, the mold starts to grow real fast and people just want to, you know, hunker down and get things fixed. Um, there's the restriction on the highest and hardest hit. Um, there's still helicoptering, um, you know, supplies and food and stuff into the detached communities between Merritt and Spencer's Bridge. That's a terrible site. There's not even any dirt to even build a road back up. It was just all taken away down, mm. down river. And I guess it's hitting mission now. So people are cleaning up our stuff from up here <laughs> down in mission. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just trying to keep people's spirits. Our schools aren't open yet, but we're trying to figure out a plan um, and just trying to sew up the, you know, take a common thread, sew up our wounds and kind of uh, work together and trying to lift each other's spirits and listen to each other's individual stories. Oh, it's beautiful. With kindness, patience, love and compassion. Yeah. Um, that's, thank you so much, Kathy, for, because it's, we often have the media out there and we get little bits of pieces, but to have, they like to say the boots on the ground on what's going on and what community and, and how community is pulling together. I'm gonna guess that uh, anybody who is watching this uh, can go to the Canadian Red Cross. It's probably the, the best site to go to right now. If you wanted to make a donation or find out how you can help or um, some information for either coast on how you can help um, during this time. Um, let's all just be kind, um, like I said, compassionate um, and loving. And um, Kathy, I think this is the time that we're going to send out some love to all the right, world. Let's, let's do it. We're going to send out some love. We're going to five because three times five is 15. So we're going to send lots out. Okay. okay. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Kindness out Kindness to the world. Out to the world, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for your time, Glenda. I know you're busy with your farm and so forth, but this was a real pleasure. So thank you very thank much. You. Take care out there. And we'll see everybody next week on Thankful Thursday. Bye for now.